Joshua chapter number 24 tonight. And thank you to whoever put cough drops up here. I don't know if they're here. I'll say it on Sunday if you, in case they're not. But that's a blessing. Was that y'all? Thank y'all. Thank you, Brother Lee. Every time I get up here, it feels like my throat turns into the Mojave Desert. And I cannot speak. And uh, these cough drops help me. So I appreciate that. Joshua chapter number 24 tonight, if you've got your Bibles. Joshua chapter 24. Let's look at verse number 15. The Bible says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods uh, which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. I want to preach on that tonight for a few minutes. Uh, I want to preach, uh, you've heard this verse uh, quoted, you've heard it uh, preached, you've seen it on signs, you've seen it, how many of how many y'all seen it in Hobby Lobby a thousand times, amen, uh, in nice cursive fancy writing, uh, but today uh, and this week, I don't, you know, the Lord's really burdened my heart uh, 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 thinking about uh, the home, amen, and how the home is affected uh, in today's society that we live in. Amen. Every channel, every television show, uh, modern television show, uh, you know, I'm not talking about Andy Griffith, of, sure, uh, of course. Somebody say amen. Andy Griffith is spiritual, y'all. Okay? <laughs> it's as spiritual as church. Amen. Uh, I love some Andy Griffith. Amen. And But I, every every time you turn on the television today... And anytime you turn on any of these new movies, any of these new shows, anything you watch on television today, uh, what is the one thing that is attacked the most? The home. The family. Amen? Even in, even in some of the most innocent, simplest of shows, they always make the dad to look like an idiot. Right? Right? They always make the man of the house, the husband of the house, the leader of the home, they always make him to look like some kind of fumbling, blundering moron. Man, either that or he's a drunk. Either that or he, he, he's lazy. He don't spend time with his children. Even, even, even in some of the shows that I would even say they're okay or decent to watch. They always make the dad out to be some kind of some kind of a of an idiot. And if it's not that, there's some kind of immorality. Amen. There's some kind of sin that's going on uh, between the husband and the wife. Uh, they don't like each other. They're always cutting each other down. If it's not that, then the children are dealing with some kind of uh, uh, some kind of sin, whether it be in the schoolhouse, whether it be at home, whether it be uh, homosexual sin, whether it be uh, drugs, or whether it be alcohol, or whether it be some kind of sexual immorality, and they make it out to be okay. They make it out to to, to be what they call and what they perceive as what normal. Amen. There's this show that my wife has told me about, some kind of reality show. I don't I haven't watched it. But she heard about it from somebody and it was the reason she had heard about it, they were telling her about this family that in South Georgia is where they're from, very Christian conservative family. And they uh they make them out to look like a bunch of freaks because, they, you know, they, 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 they have morals and values and, and, they're, and they're, you know, they, they save themselves till marriage and all that kind of, all that crazy stuff. <laughs> all that stuff, it just don't make no sense. Amen. They make them out, to, and, and if you'll notice... On these shows and these movies, anytime they talk about Christians, anytime they portray a church house, anytime they portray some kind of a preacher, they make it out to be some kind of a, uh, like some kind of a crazy cult or like we're some kind of a bunch of freaks or something. They're attacking 
the house. They're attacking the home. They're attacking our. They're attacking our children. They're attacking our churches. They're attacking our marriages. They're attacking our relationships between uh, parents and children. They're teaching children to be disrespectful. Te teaching their children to be disrespectful and disobedient to their parents. Teaching them that it's okay uh, to date the boy that daddy says is not okay for you. It's okay to sneak around. It's okay to run around. It's okay to go to the house parties. It's okay to drink the beer. It's okay to, listen, the devil's attacking our homes daily. He's using the simplest of things, a television show or an app on your phone. I was talking to one of my preacher friends just this week. And he's got two teenage girls in his home. And he said that they do random phone checks. And I say amen. If I'm play, paying the best blessed fired bill on the thing, if I want to look at it, I'm going to look at it. Amen. So he, pull, he takes, all right, the girls, let's see what y'all are looking at. He's looking at one. His wife's looking at the other. And she stops and says, Caleb, you need to get this. You know what was on her phone? 15 years old in an app where you can take a picture, send it, and delete it. There was a nude young boy from her school. Are y'all hearing me? And if you don't think the devil's trying to pollute and ruin the minds of our children, then we're totally blind. You say, preacher, I didn't really come here to hear this tonight. Well, it's what God wants us to hear. Because nobody else is preaching it, Brother Keith, like this. Them youngins that just walked through that door and went in the, the back back there, the devil is waiting to devour them head to toe. He's waiting to ruin their soul. He's waiting to destroy their mind. He's waiting to take their bodies. He's waiting to take, listen to me. He's waiting on them. And it's our job to protect them. It's our job to get them under the Bible preaching of the King James Bible. Amen. It's, it's our job to get them under Holy Ghost worship on, on a regular basis so that they can, that they can uh, 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 point their lives in the right direction towards Christ. It's, it's my job. It's my job, Brother Jim, to make sure that my son is in church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, hearing the preaching, hearing the teaching, hearing the songs, singing the songs, uh, and understanding and coming to know uh, what God is trying to tell him th uh, about sin and about hell and about heaven and how real it is. It's my job. I cannot count on you, and I cannot count on Tony to tell him. I've got to do it. It's my job. So where does it start? It starts at the house. Three things tonight and I'll be done. Number one, our house needs to be a spiritual house. Amen. Our house needs to be, it's got to be, it, it, listen, our children are counting on us or your grandchildren are counting on you for your home and your house to be a spiritual household. And it's hard, listen to me, it's hard for your house to be a spiritual household when there's filth on the television. So what you got against TV? Nothing. I got two of them. Yeah. Got one in my bedroom, one in the living room. But if there's filth and there's garbage and there's homosexuality and there's wicked music... And there's wicked shows. And listen to me, half-naked girls on the television. You don't think my son's mind's going to be polluted? There's girls, listen to me, there's girls getting pregnant having babies at 10, 11 years old. If you don't think I'm telling it right, look it up. 
And you don't think that my son at five years old can't have his little mind polluted. The Bible says you reap what you sow. And if I sow into him corruption, he's going to reap a lifetime of corruption. And it's my, it's, it's my responsibility. And most of y'all in here tonight, a lot of you, your kids are up and grown. You say, what can I do? You got grandchildren following. Amen. And let me just say this. I didn't grow up in a spiritual household. But I saw one. Okay? My granddaddy and grandmama had a spiritual household. My aunt and uncle had a spiritual household. And you know what? It rubbed off on me. Because when I was a boy, I knew that my house wasn't a spiritual household. And when I went to their house, I wanted the peace and the joy that they had. You say, well, I can't tell my kids how to raise their kids. You can just live spiritual in front of them. I promise you that'll be enough. Man, and every chance you get... Every chance you get them grandbabies and every chance you get an opportunity to pump Christ into them and pump spirituality into them and pump the Word of God into them, every chance you get, listen, it will take hold. Amen. The Bible says if you raise them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, if you, if you put it into them, the Bible says they will not depart. Amen. And I believe every word that he says. If we raise them up in it, they might go away, but I believe eventually they'll come back. And if they don't, God knows what he's doing. Amen? I'm trusting in him. I'm not saying that my son, when he walks out of my house at 18 or whatever it is, and he goes off on his own, I'm not saying he's going to be spiritual, because I don't know. I'm not saying that my little girl's going to marry the right man because I don't know, but I, I, I hope and pray to God by the grace of God with his help, I'm going to do everything that I can between now and then to make sure they make the right steps. But it starts at my house. And Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Our house has to be a spiritual house. Number two, our house has to be a solid house. Solid. What do you mean by that? The Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. My son has to see stability in me. My daughter has to see stability in me. They have to see that daddy prays regularly. They have to see that daddy reads his Bible regularly. They have to see that on Sunday morning, we're going to church. Amen. On Sunday night, daddy's going to drag us to church. On Wednesday night, daddy is going to drag me to church. Amen. And they have to see it. They have to see the stability. They have to see it day in and day out, day in and day out, because this world is, listen to me, they're, st they're stable in their ways. The devil is stable in his ways of trying to ruin our children. Amen. He's faithful. The devil's faithful and walking around as a roaring white lion, seeking whom he may devour. Amen. And he's doing his job all the time, round the clock. You better believe it. And the minute, the very second that I let my guard down, my son's going to, he's going to go down. The very minute that I let my guard down, that my daughter is going to go down. Listen to me. Hey, I, hey, we got to stay on top of it every single day. Paul said, I die daily. It's a daily, it's a daily thing. It's silly of me to think that my son is going to grow up and love God if he don't see any stability in me when it comes to serving the Lord. If he only sees it when I'm standing behind this pulpit on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, he's not going to serve God. 
If he only sees it in my and, and his mama when she's sitting behind the piano and nowhere else and no other time, he's not going to serve God. It's going to have to be every single day, Monday through Sunday, uh, uh, whether or not anybody's looking, whether somebody's watching, whether somebody sees us, we have to be stable, we have to be solid, we have to be serving the Lord, we have to have a relationship, a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Him. Or it's not going to, listen, it's not going to take, man, to have to get, to get good at something or do, to be proficient at something, you have to do it all the time. You think Brother Eddie, Brother Eddie learned appliances overnight? No. You think Brother Todd learned how to change a transmission in, in a couple hours? No, it was daily. Every day. You think Brother Keith learned to build cabinets? In a couple days, working at it, a couple hours on Sunday, a couple hours on Wednesday. No. Every day. Every day. Day in, day out, living it, walking with him, serving. This brings me to my next point. Let me ask you this before I move on. How spiritual is your house? You don't have to answer. I want you to think about it. I want you to think real hard and real long about it. How spiritual, truly, how spiritual is your house? Secondly, how solid is your house? Can your kids look at you? Can your children look at you or your grandchildren look at you and say, my papa or my nana or my grandma and grandpa or my mama and my daddy, they're, they're spiritual and they're solid as a rock. Can they look at you and say that? I asked myself the same thing today as I was driving down the road thinking about preaching this message. Can my son and my wife and my children, my daughter, can they look at me and say that my dad, my husband is spiritual, they, he's solid. Can they look at me and say that? Thirdly, our house ought to be a house of service. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I want my home, I want my children to love working at the church, being around God's people. I want my son and my daughter, I want, I want, I want them to enjoy serving other people. I want them to enjoy serving the Lord. I want them to enjoy doing the things of God. Learning how to enjoy, learning how to love service. But do you think that will come with me griping every time I got to come up here? Man, got to go, got to go visit Brother John again today. Brother Lee called me again. Wants me to ride by. What's well, he want now? Man, I gotta. Kev, why'd you sign us up to vacuum? You know I hate to vacuum. You think of every time he hears that come out of my mouth? Oh, man. That's Tony calling again. Man, what does he want? Man, that grass is high again. I guess I had to go cut. You get what I'm saying? No, I've never said those things. So y'all just take a deep breath. Whew. Some of y'all were thinking, man, why don't you get him out of here? <laughs> but if that if that was my attitude about service. If my attitude every Sunday when we left here to go eat lunch, if the whole way down the road I'm sitting in the car talking about talking about how man, I 
preached. I, I preached. Nobody said nothing. Nobody moved. Nobody got saved. I, man, I'm just, I'm just about tired of this. What do you think my son's perception of church is going to be? What do you think his outlook on this place will be? Man, my mom and daddy hate this place. Amen. You don't think maybe your grandkids don't think the same thing? When they hear you fussing about the preacher, they hear you fussing about so-and-so. And they hear you talking about, listen, they hear you talking about so-and-so. I know it's quiet. That's okay. <laughs> Amen. I, I figured I, I would kill the mood with this message right here. But it's it, it's needed. This this is needed. We need to hear. We need to hear every now and then in areas that we need to improve. When I was doing my training, when I worked at the jail in Walton County, my training officer would all, you know, the, you, there was, you always got rated. Your uniform, your appearance, how you talk to people, how you did this, procedures and things. And it was always rated from one to five. But he'd always give me a four. His name's Officer Lambeth. I said, Lambeth, why, why are you always giving me a four? Why can't you never give me a five? What am I doing wrong? I said, you told me I'm doing great. What's the deal, man? He said, everybody can always improve more. He said, nobody's ever a five. He said, I'm not even a five. Everybody always has room for improvement. Amen. I was like, whatever. <laughs> no. I was like, man, I'm a five. Put the five down. We have to be a serving household. We have to be a spiritual household. We have to be a solid household. We have to be a serving household. Lastly, and I'm done. <clears throat> We have to be a separated household. Separated. You know, this world thinks that we're crazy. My family watching will just, they'll, some of them will watch here in just a little while and they're going to talk about me. They're, they think I've lost my mind. They think I'm crazy. I've offended some of them. Some of them won't even speak to me anymore. You say, does that bother you? Absolutely it bothers me. I love them. But I'm going to stand by the grace of God on this book. It's brought me way too far. It's been better to me than anybody or anything else ever has. I, I've come too far to turn back now. They already think I'm crazy. I'm just going to keep pushing on. Amen. They already think I've lost my mind, that I'm brainwashed, that I'm in some kind of a cult. Like I'm some kind of a weirdo. No, I have fun. I laugh. I watch TV. I go places. Amen. I go to the beach sometimes. I go fishing. I like to hunt. I spend time with my children. I don't beat my kids. I don't beat my wife. We're not weirdos. We're not a bunch of freaks. We're just sinners saved by the grace of God. And the Bible says, come out from among the world and be separate. Come out from among them, be separate, saith the Lord. He said, I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you. Separation is still biblical. 
Not a lot of preachers preaching separation anymore. But it's still there. They want to drop it. Some of these guys, some of these guys that are all reformed and, you know, they ain't Baptist no more because, you know, because we got standards and all this stuff. It's still in there. Separation is still in there. Come up from among them, be separate, saith the Lord. There's a process involved in salvation. You have salvation, and then there's, there's this process of separation and sanctification that takes place after your salvation. Man, you get saved, your life starts changing. People start changing. Your music starts changing. Your movies start to change. Your television shows start to change. The places that you go start to change. Amen? Your, cl your, your clothes start to change a little bit. Somebody say amen. Stuff starts to change. Amen? Stuff starts to, stuff starts to change a little bit. Your want-tos. Your desires. Amen? Amen? Instead of Sunday morning, instead of you saying, well, well, well I, I'm going to go out here to, to Lake Oconee. I'm going to see if I can throw buzz bait. Somebody say, that's spiritual. Even as spiritual as that is, amen. Jesus was a fisherman. Somebody say, amen. Even as spiritual as that is, your desires start to change from, well, well we're just going to make sure that we, we make it back home so that we can go to church. Your desires... You want to's. All of this stuff starts to change. You start to you start to hang around spiritual people. Your friends start to change. You start to get rid of some of them old friends, which is important. Somebody say, "Man." It's important who you hang around. Because if I'm hanging around negative people, guess what I'm going to be? Can anybody guess? Negative. I'm going to start hanging around rich people. Somebody say amen. Maybe it'll rub off. Either that, maybe they'll drop some money and I'll, I'll pick it up. Things start to change. When I got saved, my friend base it, it ain't nowhere near what it was. I can tell you all that right now. I've talked to some of my friends that I grew up with. You know how Facebook is. People find you, send you a message. I found one a while back. I said, he said, how's it going, man? How's your life? I said, I'm good. I got saved. I got called to preach. I'm I'm preaching. He said, are you serious? <laughs> I said, yeah, man, God called me to preach. I got saved. God changed my life. I said, I'm pastoring a church. He said, man, that's, a, that's unbelievable. He said, you were the last person I ever would have thought would have been a pastor. It's amazing what God can do if we'll allow ourselves to be separated. And let me just say this, and I'm done. Let me just say this. Just because you're separated and you're living a spiritual, solid life serving the Lord doesn't mean that you won't have fun. It doesn't mean that you won't have friends. It doesn't mean that you won't have a good time. It doesn't mean that you won't enjoy your life. It doesn't mean that you're going to be locked under, under lock and key uh, from, the, from, the, from the preacher. It doesn't mean any of those things. We still have a ball. Me and my friend, my preacher friends, we have a ball. We have fun. We laugh. We have a good time. But the difference between me, the new me and the old me, now I don't feel guilty about it. I don't wake up with a headache. I don't wake up with regret. I don't wake up wondering what happened. 
I don't wake up now. I don't wake up. Listen, when I have fun, I, I don't have any kind, of, uh, any kind of remorse about it, any kind of guilt. And it's not because I'm perfect. And it's not because I've got it all together. But let's listen to me. Let's, as a church, try to be spiritual, to be solid, to be serving, and to be separated. And if we can do that at home, we're going to see it here at church. Amen? We've got to be dedicated. We've got to be dedicated. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. God, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for how it helps us, how it leads us and guides us and directs us. It, it, it puts us on the right path. And Lord, I pray, God, that you'd help us to take this word tonight and heed it and apply it to our lives. I pray, God, that it wouldn't go out void, but, Lord, that it would, Lord, find a resting place in each and every heart that's here tonight. And we'll be sure to thank you and we'll be sure to praise you for all that you do for us in Jesus' name. Amen.